Let's take another look at the script editor. So if I have a sheet open, I can go to Tools and click Script Editor to open up the script editor. Now one thing you'll notice if you looked at the previous video is that everything is different. And that's because your, uh, your script kind of lives within this spreadsheet itself. So if I go to Open, it's going to ask me, you know, I don't have any other saved projects, you know, that, that doesn't actually have any knowledge of the other, s of the other spreadsheet's code. So it's going to be a fresh start for every spreadsheet that you have, uh, at least until we get into, you know, building libraries and dealing with libraries later. But for now, we can kind of see how we have this project. We can call this, you know, second project here. And it takes a moment to save that, but we can uh, do a little bit more than just the basics of outputting log messages. Now, we're going to get into custom functions and how we can use those later, but one thing that I can do here is I can just simply say logger dot, uh, dot log, and I can put a message out to the log. We'll go ahead and hit enter. But I might want to do a little bit more than that. I might want to say, you know, maybe log numbers or some other values. Now I can very easily perform arithmetic and other thing, you know, other calculations within uh, function here. So the way that the script is going to execute is it's going to execute everything line by line. So the first thing that happens when I select my function and I hit that run button is it's going to find my function and it's going to start executing the statements that I have one by one. So this very first statement, logger dot log, first message, it's basically saying log the message whatever is in these parentheses. So I'm going to give it some value, some string here, and it's going to log that. Now I could say var 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 second message. This is the second message. Now what I've done here is I've created a variable and what that is is just a place to store something uh, just for a moment and that's or just as long as I need it really and uh, that's going to hold this new string. This is the second message. Now instead of calling logger.log with that text or the, the string that I've given it the first time I can use logger.log second message. And second message now contains this value. This is the second message. So this variable that I've introduced gives me the capability to store something. So if I save my code and I click the run button, what you'll see now when I go to my log is first message, this is the second message. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting because it allows us to store something, do something with it and then call on it later. Uh, variables we'll use throughout the rest of this course. We'll need to use variables to store things or to make calculations or to make it easier for us to understand how calculations occur over time. Um, they are all declared. We declare a variable uh, with this VAR keyword uh, and then we give it a name. The name usually is going to be something with letters. Uh, usually we use what is called camel casing when we, uh, when we declare a variable. And you'll notice that M is capitalized, second message, that M is capitalized, and it just identifies that we're beginning a new word. The next thing you'll see when we declare a variable is this equal sign, and this equal sign is going to say we're going to declare second message, and we're going to set it equal to this string. And then we have our semicolon at the end like we should you always do when we're writing these statements. So what is actually happening here in my function at this point is it's starting off at the top, it's logging that first message, so it's taking this string first message and logging it, and it's declaring a variable second message and logging that, or creating this uh, this text here, and then we're logging that in the next line. We could also say logger dot log second message again, and what that's going to do if we run this is we should see now the second message twice because we're still using this. So this allows us to not only store this value, but we can also reuse it multiple times. Uh, so that's kind of a nice thing we can do here. We can, we can create these variables just to keep track of some things for us for a very short period of time. Now one thing that you'll notice as you're writing this is that um, coding is very particular. When we're writing the code, it's, it's not very forgiving when it comes to uh, l cases or you know typos or anything like this. For example, if I save this and I run, you notice I get this error. It says second message is not defined. Well, I, I have defined it right here. Uh, but the problem is that, well, it's not the same. You know, we've got this M, which is different casing. The same thing will happen if, you know, I were to say uh, second message, but I forgot the E. 
I'd get a similar message when I when I try to run this. It's going to say, "All right, well, that's not a that's not okay." So on line four, I've got this problem, and that's because it's very very particular. Another thing that might happen is you might run into a situation where maybe we forget one of our parentheses, and if we run that, you'll see we get this problem missing uh, after the argument list on line four. So it's going uh, the Google Sheets script editor is going to give us uh, a good capability to kind of identify where errors or typos might happen, uh, but we have to kind of keep in mind that you know if we're not very particular about the way we enter our code, we're going to run into these problems. Some other things that you might see is you know for example if before we we talked about how you can have double quotes and single quotes. Now if I mix my double quotes with a single quote and I run this, you're going to see here it's not uh, this string literal. It's saying this literal string is unterminated. What that means is that I've be I've begun this with a double quote, but then I have no double quote to end it. Now I can change this to a this single quote to a double quote, or I can just put a double quote at the end. Either way, that's okay. You know, the fact that I have a single quote within my double quote, my double quoted string, that's all right. So this literal, now I'm going to see this is the second message, but it's going to have that double that single quote at the end of it. So let's go ahead and save and run. And now if I view my logs, you'll notice it's got that, that apostrophe, that single quote at the end. Uh, so that kind of gives me, you know, that kind of shows like, well, we can use single quotes. I could put, you know, second in single quotes and that's okay. But if I were to use single quotes here, then I'd have a problem because the, the script editor doesn't know that when I encounter, encounters this first single quote that, that that should be part of the string it, it looks at that as a, well the string is over the string has ended so now if I run you'll see I get a, a missing semicolon so I'm missing the semicolon before the statement on line 3 here so we can change this to double quotes inside and you can see it works just uh, just the opposite way just uh, like we did before if we have single quotes on the outside we can put double quotes anywhere on the inside if we have double quotes on the outside we can put single quotes anywhere on the inside so if we go ahead and run now, this is going to be okay. Other things that we might run into, let's say we accidentally lop off that last curly brace and we run. You see we get this missing curly brace after the function body. That's kind of a problem. If we forget a period, it's going to tell me, well, that's a problem too. Logger log is not defined because it looks at that as a single as a single word. It's not logger dot log anymore. That's, and there's no separation. It's just logger log, which is not something we've defined. Uh, so that's not going to work either. If we use a capital L with log instead of a lowercase l and we run that, we get log as I couldn't find this function. This function doesn't exist. Uh, and that's because because these are this L is an uppercase instead of a lowercase, that's a separate thing now as well. That's a totally different thing. So if we change that to lowercase, that will work again. So it's very particular. We, we can't really do a lot outside of the bounds of what we've already done. Um, so one exception to all of those is that, as you can just see, when you remove that semicolon, it, that's actually going to be okay. That's not necessary, and we can take that away uh, here as well. And we run, and it's still okay. And you know we can take this one here, and we can run, and it's going to be okay. So semicolons are optional, but uh, they're very strongly encouraged, just because they kind of tell the script editor that you're done, that you're done with whatever it is you're going to do. So if I view, up my, uh, view my log here, you can see everything worked out okay, but uh, it looks kind of ugly without the semicolons. If, you, if you're used to coding, you'll, you'll kind of expect to see the semicolons. So it's strongly encouraged that you use those. Um, but you can see here, we're still logging that first message, still declaring this variable with the second message, still logging that a few more times. We could change this first value to do that the same way. Var first message is equal to first message and then we can just select this text and replace that with our variable first message and we could even log it twice if we feel like it and we hit run and you can see here our log now is going to have first message first message second message second message so the variables do make it a little bit easier. They do uh, in introduce a little bit more complexity, but uh, the important thing to understand is that we have to be very, very particular about the way we enter everything here. We have to make sure that every single thing we type kind of matches up. If we have a capital V for our var, it's not going to work. You know, we're going to run into a problem here. If we have, uh, you know, if we have all caps, it's not going to work. 
you know just it's very this the syntax is what we call the syntax you know the way that we specify this the way we type it the way we write our code all of those things are very very particular so uh, when you're entering your code if you're getting word errors make sure that your syntax is matching make sure that you have var the first name the equal sign and then whatever value it is as well as the semicolon if you follow those rules you should have an easier time uh, with your code um, and it should make it easier and, and less of a headache to try to make things work the other thing that I would recommend as you're going through these these exercises is always make sure that you're running you're saving and running frequently that way if you run into a problem you'll be able to identify it more quickly and the faster you can identify that you've, you've made an error or you've made a mistake uh, the easy, easier it's going to be to recognize that so we'll get a little bit more into what we can do with the script environment and we're going to continue to work in this for the next few videos but for now thanks for watching